I'm going to be teaching you the most basic things you need to make a C-sharp hack. This includes getting a process by its name, opening the process, getting the module base address using two different methods, walking pointer chains using find DMA Addy, how to write to the console, how to debug using git last win32 error, and how to write process memory. In this case, we're just going to be changing ammo in a salt cube. Now, I am not a C-sharp expert, but it has been at least six years since we've had a C-sharp video on our channel, and I decided it's time we got a new one, and I'm going to make it. So, I have a few days experience, and I was able to whip this up for the video. To start a new project, let's search for template under C sharp and just type in framework because there's a lot of different ones of these templates. We just want a Windows console app but using .NET framework. So here it is, console app C sharp .NET framework. Now first thing we need to do is we're going to be running this as administrator so we need to add a manifest file. So right click add new item manifest right here. And where it says as invoker, we need to change that to require administrator. Next, we're going to add basically a header file. So let's add new item. There's no such thing as a header file in C Sharp. So let's just add a class. And this class is going to be called uh, GH. That's actually going to be the name of the uh, namespace. And the console is going to be called GH API. So let's pop over in here. And the first thing you'll notice is you can't access all the regular Win32 APIs. So you have to use something called Pinvoke. So pinvoke.net is a website where you can search up all the different Win32 APIs, uh, functions, and structures, because none of these are exposed in .NET. So you actually have to declare them yourself and then import them from the DLLs. And so basically, whatever API you need, you go to this website, search it, and then it gives you what you need to paste in. So basically, the first thing we need to do is we need to paste in a bunch of these things. So first thing, we need DLL import, right? Paste that in. We're going to need process entry 32. We're going to need module entry 32. Read process memory. Uh, write process memory. Process 32. Uh, process 32 next. We will need module 32 first. And module 32 next. Close handle 32. And I think create tool help 32 snapshots, the last one that we need. And then let's go back up here. We actually need to define, we need to import our uh, correct things here. So we're just going to be using system, and we're going to be using system.diagnostics, and we're going to be using uh, system.runtime.interop services. Okay, so that's going to give us access to all those things. Now, process access flags is not declared. So we need to grab that too. So let's go back to our processes. This is open process, right? And we're going to see that they have these flags defined here. So we'll grab those too. What else do we need? Let's format that a little nicer. Snapshot flags. So if we find tool help 32 snapshot again, right here, we see listed. These are the snapshots here. Boom. Cool. Okay, so I just blew through that really fast, so you don't have to watch me copy and paste slowly. Um, but I want to explain to you um, nothing. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you've done the C++ videos, this is this is generic stuff here. This is what you do in everything, right? We need open process because we need to handle the process. We need the kernel to give us memory permissions to access that process. We're going to use the process entries and module entries in our module uh, in our tool help 32 snapshot function um, and these are all needed for tool help 32 snapshot we need to close the handle when we're done using it these are the flags uh, what modules we want for our snapshot to return right we want modules not threads etc so let's that should be it so let's go over to here and we can start right now our code here We 
need to grab the uh, using namespaces from our header file here, and we're just going to paste them in our source file. We're going to be using this basically in any hack. You're going to need access to these two things. So first thing we're going to do is process proc equals process dot get processes by name, and we're going to pass in ac client. In this case, we don't need the dot exe, but we do need to access uh, element zero. Um, because this gets all processes with that name, not just one, and the zero element will just get us the first one in that array. So then we're going to do var hproc equals gh api dot open process, and we're going to pass in gh api dot uh, process access flags dash all and a false, and then proc dot id. Then we're going to get the module base. So we're going to do var mod base equals gh api dot get module base address. And we're going to pass in uh, h pro, uh, proc, and we're going to look for acclient.exe. We haven't defined this get module base address yet, so let's go over to our little header file here, and we're going to do public static int pointer get module base address uh, process proc and string mod name. Int pointer address equals int pointer dot zero. And then we're going to do for each uh, process module m in proc.modules. We'll do if m.module name equals equals mod name. We are going to get the address equals m.base address. And then we're going to break. And then down here. Jesus Christ, Drake. Return address. Now the problem with this function is that process that we pass in does it contains static information. It doesn't carry uh, up to date information. So in case you need a module base address or something else that's going to be up to date currently, then you need to use tool help there to just snapshot. So we're basically going to use the same function prototype. It's going to do the same thing, just use a different API. So instead of process, we're going to do an int int proc ID. And so I'll show you that. So we do uh, int pointer mod base address equals uh, int pointer dot zero. And then int pointer h snap equals create tool help 32 snapshot. We're going to pass in snapshot flags dot module or it with um, snapshot flags dot module 32. And then proc ID. Then we'll do uh, if hsnap.2 uh, int64 does not equal invalid handle value. And we need to define that up here. So that's going to be constant uh, int invalid handle value equals negative 1. And then in this if statement, we will do module entry 32 mod entry equals new module entry 32. And then mod entry dot dw size equals cast to you int marshall dot size of type of module entry 32. And then if statement if module 32 first hsnap ref mod entry. Now this is, I hope this looks familiar to you if you've done the C++ tutorials. We're basically doing the exact same thing. And then in this do while loop, we do do while uh, module 32 next. hsnap ref mod entry. We're basically just passing a mod entry by reference, right? And then in the loop itself, we're going to do if mod entry dot sz module dot equals mod name. It's just a standard string compare. Then we're going to do mod base address equals mod entry dot mod base address. And then we're going to break out of the loop. And then <clears throat> one, two, three. Then we're going to close the handle. And then we're going to return mod base address. Hey. Return mod base address. All right, typical rake, couple typos. We need to put hsnap in there. And should compile now invalid handle values right here nope and we got an equal sign right there now we're good now our create tool help 32 snapshot 
this looks like it's defined incorrectly. So this is taking an unsigned int th32 process ID. Huh, that's what we put in here. What if we change it to int? There we go. Okay, cool. Next up is our find DMA Addy. So let's do public static int pointer. Find DMA Addy. Pass in a int pointer h proc int pointer pointer in array offsets and here we'll do var buffer equals new byte int pointer dot size and then for each int i in offsets read process memory h proc pointer buffer buffer dot length out var read and pointer equals int pointer dot size equals equals four question mark int pointer dot add new int pointer uh, bit converter dot two int thirty two buffer comma zero blah blah i a next line would we'll finish this if else thing pointer equals int pointer dot add new int pointer bit converter dot two int 64 buffer zero i boom and then at the end of this return pointer so this is a pcg uh, gave me some source code to help me with this function it's basically the same as his um, basically, if you wanted to define a buffer like this in C-sharp, this is how you do it. And then just a regular for loop, we're reading the buffer size length. And then we're checking, is the int pointer size 4? If it is, then use 2 int 32. If it's not 4, then we're on 64-bit. We want to use 2 int 64. So this is just some magic to convert it to the right data size. Okay. Now we can go back to our regular file here and finish the source code up. So we got the git module base dress using the normal way. Now we want to show you the second way. So var mod base two equals ghapi dot git module address. And this time we're going to pass in the ID and then the actual uh, executable itself because we want to get that module, right? And then we're going to do var ammo address equals ghapi dot find DMA addy hproc uh, int pointer mod base 2 plus 0x10 f4 f4 new int array and we're going to populate that array with 0x374 0x140 0. that should be good now we're going to write to the console uh, system dot console dot right line uh, ch -ch -ch, last error uh, that plus then we're going to do the marshal dot get last win 32 error so that's going to get us the last error so you can use this to be to bug right so if if any of these failed then the last error will be written to console just like when you use uh get last error and see then we're going to do a console dot right line ammo address plus zero uh, x ammo address plus two string and put that x in what that does with that capital x is it just tells it to print it in uppercase then we do int new ammo equals one three three seven standard procedure gh api dot write process memory and we're going to do h proc ammo address new ammo for out underscore Basically, that's like null, kind of. Um, new ammo. So the problem here is uh, it's expecting a byte array, and instead it's getting an integer. So what we can do to fix that, go to definition, and we're actually going to change this byte array buffer to this. Uh, it's going to be not byte array. It's going to be uh, marshal, marshal as unmanage type as any 
and then this is going to be object, boom. So now we can pass in any type. If we go back over here, now it should compile. Cool, we're looking good now. And the last thing we need to do is we're just going to do console.readkey. That's a git char so that the console doesn't uh, close at the end. So now, if everything worked correctly, this should work. All right, let's compile. Boom. Last error, 299, ammo address. Okay, so we failed. Okay, I did find the problem. Um, if you look at the module entry 32 structure, uh, we defined the layout right here, and the char set was set to auto. So if we set that to ANSI, now it should work. The problem was it wasn't getting the correct module um, base. So this was working, but this function wasn't. So if we step over this, we should see, yeah, mod base 2. So it's got the same address, so those are both working now. So this should be fine now. So find DMA Addy is going to go through that pointer chain. It gets the right address. We're going to write the line. We're going to write the line. We're going to write process memory. And now we should see last error is 0, and the ammo address is set, and ammo is 1 through 3, 7. So there it is. We did it. Cool. All right, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos, and peace out.